Hello everybody, my name is Jet Bone Gamer and welcome back. So yeah, so I haven't been uploading a single video since last video of you know. <coughs> I did that because I got really bored. So yeah. So even even there's another reason. I was sick, but um, I have been coughing and I have a stuffy nose, but my nose is getting my nose is getting better than usual. It's getting better and better. I'll be okay, you guys. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I'll get better and better soon. So, new death dog came out today. Enjoy watching. And me too. And I don't know if you guys heard, but you guys hear about season seven coming up soon. Be right back. I'm back, so I just got food. I'm hungry as usual. You got French fries, or there's some kind of sandwich. Some kind of sandwich. I don't know what it is, but. Anyways, let's sit back and watch this fight. And you guys are there. You guys might asking me what I'm voting for. So, so after the statics and all that, I'll say who might win the battle. Let's start. We haven't really done the best job with our merchandise recently. We really want to be able to give our community new stuff that they'll enjoy. And you've got an impressive resume, so if you think you can handle it, the merchandise director job is yours. Great to be here, Mr. Hines. I won't let you guys down. Excellent. Who is the he? first thing you'll need to tell our community about is our first membership. What's that? Well, Rooster Teeth First is kind of like our subscription service for the RT oh, yeah, website, the, the mobile uh, app, and yeah. the Xbox and Apple TV apps. Yeah, for less than $5 a month, you get access to yeah, video this. I heard about content, it. content, everything's ad-free, and one membership works across all brands on the website. What's your plan for the promotion? Well, I was thinking I'd just put this uh, up on, you know, the internet. Did you know it's a film crew? All right, I'll see you around the water cooler. Oh, Bob, just one more thing. If it doesn't work out... We're gonna have to eat you. <laughs> hey, you, there, sign up for first membership now. What are you gonna eat me? I, I, I might sign up, I don't know. Every Should champion I sign of up? justice inspires Look, others, Overwatch. whether they mean to or not. And sometimes that inspiration oh, creates your worst nightmare. Venom, the ultimate antithesis to Spider-Man. And Bane, the burly genius Bane. who broke Bane's the really bed. Funny. He's ways <laughs> and I'm Boomstick. And Bane's it's our job to analyze their fuck. weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh, let's go read this kind of Bane. Okay. The word symbiosis refers to two organisms living in beneficial harmony, such as when two beings bond over an obsessive, psychotic desire to kill Spider-Man. Eddie Brock was an up-and-coming journalist on the brink of national success when life decided to just shit all over him. One day, Eddie published an article incriminating a man he thought was a serial killer. However, that very same day, Spider-Man caught the real killer, publicly shaming Eddie. As a result, Eddie's company fired him, his father disowned him, and his wife left him. Also, he had cancer. Damn, talk about a bad day! Understandably pretty wow. upset about it, Eddie blamed Spider-Man for ruining his life. This led to his fateful meeting with a weird black gooey alien. Remember Gag from the 90s? It's just like that, except alive and evil. This was a symbiote from okay. the planet Clintar, an alien species with one goal, to grow stronger by fusing with a living host. I know that sounds intimidating and almost parasitic, but the Clintar people are naturally a peaceful race. However, they often inherit their host's <coughs> traits and personality. This symbiote in particular had previously bonded with a violent alien bent on genocide and a costume superhero everybody knows as Deadpool. That crazy lunatic! Oh, oh there's no way this symbiote is sane after that. Oh. It wasn't. 
Afterward, it bonded with Spider-Man, who experienced what? this rage and lunacy firsthand. Horrified by this, Spider-Man eventually discarded the symbiote. Unaware, the alien had determined Spidey was its ideal host and became obsessed with him. Much like Bar Trash Cindy that sometimes you go home with but never really want to see her again. So what do you get when you combine an angry man and a black <sighs> goo monster both hatefully obsessed with the same guy? Most just call him Venom. Did you know, Eddie came up with the name Venom because he felt he was spewing Venom from the tabloids he worked at. Seriously? Uh, I give that origin a 3 okay. out of 10. Thank God the name's cool at least, and Venom's abilities are even cooler. He's insanely strong, ridiculously agile, and has a fast-paced healing factor. He can power through bullets with no problem at all. Plus, the symbiote carries some of the abilities of its previous owners, including Spidey. That means he can climb on walls and shoot webbing strong enough that Spidey himself can't break through. Technically speaking, Venom simply reproduces the webbing effects via one of his more useful powers, shape-shifting. This symbiote can act as a liquid, allowing it to increase Venom's size for intimidation or even mimic Eddie's everyday clothing for discretion. Not to mention Venom can morph into a wingsuit to glide through the air, isolate and purge toxins from its host's body, straight up turn invisible, or even just sprout spikes for simple stabbing weapons. With these abilities seemingly limited only by his twisted imagination, Venom has tangled with many of his world's heavy hitters. He's defeated Spider-Man without having a host, resisted Ghost Rider's penance stare, and shaken off the Hulk's infamous thunderclap. That's right, he's even taken blows from the likes of the Juggernaut and the Hulk. Even if Venom does get injured, the symbiote can rapidly heal its host. From broken bones, impalement through the chest, or even blasts from an anti-tank rocket. He's also so speedy that he can catch up to bullets in mid-flight. But if he doesn't feel like it, he'll just take the shot and spit it back with deadly force. He's strong enough to bust down metal doors with his fists, tear apart large military trucks, Ooh. or throw cars several blocks away. Oh. I mean, part of that's gotta be Brock. Have you seen how much that dude can lift? Most impressively, Venom once held up a giant carnival ride similar to a Ferris wheel, even after getting struck by one of his worst weaknesses, a sound gun. Wow. A sound gun? That's pretty lame. So, like, I could just beat him if okay, I scream then. really loud? With enough sound or literal firepower, yes, you could force the symbiote to expose the vulnerable host underneath. Though I should note that repeated exposure has helped Venom build up some tolerance. Also, while the symbiote is highly versatile, Venom is not exactly a strategist. Unsurprising given huh. his apparent insanity. I like being bad. It makes me happy. The symbiote also requires a diet containing the chemical phenethylamine. Pheno, what? You like, buy that at the <laughs> store, or...? No, it's found in certain fungi, chocolate, and brain matter, which the symbiote greatly hungers for. Oh great, now it eats brains! God, this guy is literally a living nightmare. Eddie, is that you? There's no more Eddie, and no more symbiote. Only Venom. <laughs> In his personal mission to drive crime from Gotham City, Batman has faced dozens of foes, each more vile and cunning than the last. But none challenged his sheer willpower more than the monstrous man called Bane. Bane's Bane. life was screwed from the start. He was born into prison and made to carry out his dead dad's life sentence. Talk about carrying the sins of your father. I mean, who puts a baby in jail? Couldn't it just, like, crawl through the bars? Did they make a baby jail? I have so many questions. The child spent his dawning years in captivity, forced to fend for himself against a cruel and unforgiving world. Then one day, a fateful accident caused something to snap inside him. I'm guessing his neck. No, well, it should have. Instead, the boy slipped into a coma where he saw a vision of his future self, a man standing above all other men. Future self told him he would be second to none so long as he could conquer the power of fear, which is apparently shaped like a bed. Huh, would you look at that? What are the odds? When the child awoke, he began his journey to conquer that fear through the power of bloody murder. Hell yeah, that's also when the prison warden called him a Bane to everything holy. And that's why he's named Bane. Ugh, two out of ten. 
Anyway, yeah. it wasn't long before Bane caught wind of a certain bat ruling Gotham City by fear. But he got to work trying to become the ridiculously jacked guy he saw in his dream so he could take down Batman once and for all. As he grew up, Bane entered an intense daily workout regimen, not just of his body, but his mind as well. He educated himself in 10 languages, escapology, combat tactics, and several martial arts, including a few he created himself. Bane pretty much became a legend across the prison, so to remind everybody who was in charge, the warden decided to make an example of him. See, this place wasn't just a prison. The army of Santa Prisco was conducting tests on human subjects with an experimental formula called Venom. Because super soldier formulas are all the rage. The procedure had killed every previous test subject, but Bane proved hardier than expected. And after he had a taste, Bane wanted venom for himself. So he faked his own death, punched a few sharks to death, and liberated the whole prison single-handed. The inmates joined his cause, okay. and he took his new super soldier serum to Gotham City. Using a special apparatus on his wrist, Bane can administer a dosage of venom directly into his brain at will. Doing so dramatically increases his muscle mass, 